So anyhow, I want to read this from the American Post Gazette, which, which is an email um, I get. Um, I actually do not know who the actual author is. Sometimes it's James Madison. Sometimes it's um, one of the, you know, the different founding fathers' names. This time it's written by John Jay. You remember John Jay from our founding fathers? Okay. Russell Pierce is one of the country's greatest patriots. He is deserving of being mentioned in the same breath with the founders of our nation. Yes, in the same breath with Patrick Henney, Henry, Samuel Adams, Thomas Paine, James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson and others, even George Washington. The greatest of our founding fathers, these same men and women who put their lives, their fortunes and their sacred honor on the line. Russell Pierce, Uh, has stood up for and continues to stand up for our founding principles enshrined in our founding documents, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States of America. Despite oppression from those who mock America's exceptionalism, Russell Pierce has stood firm and does not shirk in, re in support of all things American, and he makes no apologies for it. That is possibly why, even after being out of elective office for almost eight years, since 2011, his enemies, and I do not use that term loosely, yeah. they are enemies, not just opponents, continue to attack him wherever uh, they feel they might make a, a comeback of sorts, or he's just making too much sense. They sense he still has a strong following. <coughs> Uh, they sense that he still speaks truth to power and to the corrupt political leaders of our day, and they are correct. As a legislator, Russell Pierce was the author of many laws that confirmed and strengthened already existing constitutional mandates and laws that protect the individual rights of American citizens. They include laws that protect personal property, speech, and practice of religion, the Second Amendment, and the sanctity of life. His legacy law, SB 1070, upheld federal and state law, allowing law enforcement to do their jobs, protecting US citizens from the invasion of illegal aliens across our borders, and then illegally setting up shop in our country. Now that was back in 2011. Contrary to what you have been told by the media, most of SB 1070, including the most salient parts of it, have been upheld by the U.S. Supreme Court. Despite that ruling, many in charge of, our, uh, of enforcing the laws, federal and state, have gone against their oath of office and refused to do their jobs protecting us. And of course, this has not gone unnoticed by Russell Pierce, who continues to speak out about the lack of political courage of many of our elected and appointed officials, and that's why uh, he continues to be a target. The great General Washington and his generation would be proud. So that is signed by your faithful friend and servant, John Jay. So also, uh, I found out that Senator Pierce served 23 years in the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office and he was a representative at the House of Representatives from uh, 2001 to 2009 and in the Arizona Senate from 2009 to 2011. So, and he currently is uh, Chief Deputy of the America County Treasurer's Office. So, please welcome Senator Russell Pierce. Now, would you like to put on this, this lavalier or if, hold the mic? If that's easier, that, what? that might be easier. No, it's not necessary. You can just do this if you wish. Final word is. Yeah, this, this just helps with our um, videotaping. There we go. Yeah, plenty of leash. Brenda. <laughs> well, what a lengthy and have nice you heard that? introduction. <laughs> I have. I, I also get the American Post Gazette. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I can tell you, 
Uh, I, I used to get it years ago, too, when they were very active. Drink. Is it not on? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you have to just, just closer. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, I used to get the American Post Gazette years ago, also, and then it kind of went into a sabbatical. It kind of took some time off. And it's back, and I'm grateful. They exposed the corruption of the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors back in the day uh, and the courts uh, that were uh, doing some terrible things in, in Maricopa County, specifically the, the Superior Court, uh, such as releasing 92% of all illegal aliens that were arrested for violent crimes. Amazing. First of all, you know, when you get released, usually the conditions of release is you'd be a law-abiding citizen. It's difficult when they're not a citizen. No longer you they're illegal. And you must be gainfully employed. It's a felony to gainfully employ them. So I always felt that was kind of strange that the court would release them and give them illegal mandates. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but anyway, I, I'm grateful to be here tonight. I, I drove fairly fast, didn't get caught. I was <laughs> uh, of course, you know, if you read Arizona state law, the speed limit, well, if you go over 85, it's a criminal offense. But, but the civil traffic, which is up till 85, is just, it's reasonable and prudent depending on the circumstances, that 28701A. So it's just a suggestion. <laughs> you know, it is not, it, it is not a specific amount, uh, you know, uh, uh, amount of speed. So anyway, I always tease those folks in that, that, that uh, I understand what's reasonable and prudent, and I'll decide that, not them. <clears throat> and so anyway, I'm grateful to be here. I, uh, uh, I used to teach Sheriff Joe. I was his chief deputy, and I used to teach Sheriff Joe that he was a good student. I, you know, he's learned well and uh, taught him everything he knows. <laughs> we used to have a lot of fun and, and I, I just spent time there. Uh, some of my best years as growing up as a deputy sheriff. Um, I always wanted to join the good guys and be an impact on my community of removing the bad guys. So I say const our, our constitutional liberties, one of the, the most constant Government has a duty. Government has a constitutional duty to protect the citizens of this state in this country from those who violate our laws. Amen. And anything less than that is an impeachable offense. Amen. I can tell you as a very weak need folks, I'm talking about elected and appointed. Amen. You know, this is it's really embarrassing. I mean is it just collateral damage? You know, there's a, there's several reports out there that ought to just really take you back. One is a congressional report several years ago called Drawing a Line in the Sand. It was a congressional homeland security report that said as many as 9,000 Americans die a year from illegal aliens. 25 a day on an average. 12 by stabbings and shootings, 13 by DUI and related crimes. That's more than happened in 9-11. That's more than we're killed in Pearl Harbor. It's more than we lost in Iraq. I mean, we have a war going on, a cultural war and a, and a real war with protecting and saving this republic. And that's why I do take no prisoners on it. And uh, we have some good people too. I don't want to put them all in the same box. You have a good view, but we have a majority, Brandon can tell you. We have a majority in the House and the Senate with initials are. We do not have a majority of conservative, constitutionally minded folks. We do not have a conservative uh, uh, majority. As a result, it's difficult to get good laws passed. It's difficult just to, to force those who, who are supposed to enforce the laws with mandates on them that recreate, you know, feel penalties for not doing it. But if there's no penalties, no consequences, we seem to have it. City of Phoenix just passed. I want to get into some of the introduction. She was so long with that introduction and uh, so kind. Uh, uh, and I don't know who those authors are either, in most cases. And they go, they go by founding fathers, so uh, the anonymity allows them, you, to focus on the issue, not the writer. And that was taken from Thomas Jefferson, who made that statement way back, and he used to write uh, with an enmity, so that you didn't say, oh, there's Thomas Jefferson goes again. You focused on the issue, not the writer. It's the issue that's important. 
you know, as we as they do a great job of trying to drive that home. So anyway, I'm one of 13 kids, a blended family, and uh, and uh, my mom has 74 grandchildren. <laughs> I know of none of them that are registered as a Democrat. <laughs> I can tell you, however, my dad was a Democrat. We prayed for him. <laughs> so, but he was concerned with one, one of the old White Mountain Democrats. Oh, thanks. Uh, so anyway, my wife is one of 12 children. Uh, we just keep them voting, and hopefully it has an impact on getting good guys in. You know, I get a chance, and, and used to get a chance, to go around the country and talk on the Constitution, the Founding Fathers. I love reading and understanding the Founding Fathers. I, I've studied them for years. I used to study the Cleon Scouse, probably the number one expert in the world on the Constitution of Freedom. You know, and, and I feel like I know some of them personally. Almost, you know, the Thomas Paine and the common sense that he wrote, and, and, uh, and, and the, 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 you know, Thomas Jefferson and George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, uh, the real Benjamin Franklin, the real George Washington, the real Thomas Jefferson, not the rewritten history. Great man. There's, you know, I say we say often, and I do too. During the World War II, that was one of the greatest generations that have ever lived, next to our founding fathers and what they went through. And we can be so grateful for the freedoms we enjoy today. And it's kind of like the letters that Abigail used to write to John Adams, and she said because they spent most of their marriage apart, you know, fighting for these causes, and she'd write to him and say. We're apart now, and we suffer these things so that our children won't have to. You know, I appreciate that dedication and that loyalty that we see the future. We recognize our responsibility to the future, to our children and this coming generation. The legacy that we have an obligation to leave them of freedom. You know, the liberties that were given to us. You know, I, I recently spoke at an event called uh, uh, Patriots Over Socialism. In, in Channel 3, Channel 5, Arizona Republic uh, attacked me, uh, and uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, they attacked me because I was talking about the Founding Fathers and the shedding of blood that took place in order to give us this republic. And I, rec and I reminded them, of the veterans, you know, what Memorial Day was coming up and what it stood for, those that have lost their lives, shedding blood, their blood in protecting and saving this republic that was given to us by the shedding of blood. And I, and I went on for a while and I told him, and, and, and I don't mean to say this lightly, I said, I'm willing to do the same. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to protect this republic. And for that, I was attacked as if I'm advocating the shedding of blood. Well, apparently I, I've recognized the media's dislike and disdain is mostly for those that support the Constitution and the ten amendments to that Constitution and the liberties that were founded and enshrined in those documents by our founders, and I truly believe we were inspired. I believe that if God had his hand in the making of America, as sure as I stand here today, the miracles that occurred, the things that occurred, they shouldn't have won that war. They shouldn't have won that war. You know, this is a little ragtag army. Never had more than about 23% of the, the folks supporting them at any one time. That was the greatest number supporting them. Taking on the most powerful army and navy in the world. You just can't imagine. So I'm sure a lot of those people didn't support them because they knew they weren't going to win. They wanted to stay on the, on the good side of those guys that were going to win because of their strength and their masses and their training. All the things that would tell you they're going to win. But they didn't win. It has always been the few the patriots that have kept the candle of liberty burning. It has always been a minority. And that's what you guys are when you're in this Tea Party, when you want your country back, when you want those leaders that are elected to just do what's right. Just do what's right. You know, I'm in a fight with the city of Phoenix. Uh, they're violating uh, the law. Actually, almost every city in the state of Arizona is violating the law. Yes. Now, let me just tell you, I don't remember if all of you remember the things that we passed. Uh, and, and I'm grateful for the chance I had to, 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 
foster and promote and, and, uh, and further these causes. Uh, during the passing of, of SB 1070, you know we had 34 states come to me, 34 states wanting us, me, and, 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 I, and I worked with Judicial Watch to, to help with them. They have the resources that I didn't have when they started calling. And Judicial Watch has been a tremendous source, have defended me in every case to the Supreme Court. Spent millions of dollars in defense of your liberty and the laws that Arizona passed. But anyway, 34 states came to me and wanted to help write legislation similar to SB 10. So only five states did it. You know, followed through because of the lawsuit from the ACLU and the millions of dollars that the left is willing to spend to shut you down. They can't afford those kind of battles. Mm -hmm. So we don't fight the war we ought to fight. We let them get away with stuff and then they get. And then they get, they win at these liberal courts, like the Ninth Circus Court of, of Appeals. Yeah. They win at these courts. The Supreme Court not to, cannot take everything, so these bad decisions stand, and they know that. They're very strategic. They stand. They know that because th that's their win. That's their win. They have hundreds of lawsuits in the 11 different, 13 different district courts around the nation, and most of those decisions will stand. Eleven of those thirteen courts appointees are Obama appointees in majority. So you can't expect very good decisions out of them most of the time, and, and they're proving themselves to be such. But anyway, I, I remember when we when I first took on me, you know, uh, Proposition 200. Some of you may remember it back in 2004. Uh, we sent a bill up to to, to Governor Napolitano, by the way, who we deported. <laughs> and, uh, and we gave her this bill that, that you had to have ID when you go to the polls. Yep. Well, she didn't think it was fair that people should have, you should have a right to know who's there. So anyway, we knew that she wasn't going to support a tougher bill that I had going, which required proof of citizenship to register to vote. No other state in the United States had that law. Not, a, not one state had a law that said you had to prove citizenship in order to register. And the federal statutes did not require it. The Voting Rights Act didn't require citizenship. It's amazing. So we know fraud happens. In fact, uh, through the vote, uh, uh, this last election identified three million illegal votes. Uh, but the left right, if you believe that's not the case. But anyway, so they really came in way on fighting. And the proposition just 200 just did three things. So that was a citizen's initiative. Very, very difficult. And it should be. I took advantage of the initiative process, but to be honest with you, I'm not a fan of the initiative process. It goes around a Republican form of government. We elect those folks, and the difference between Republican and democracy. In fact, any time you have an elected official talk about our democracy, fire them. They don't even know what kind of a government they're involved in. It's absolutely amazing. This is not a democracy. Our founders warned us the dangers of a democracy. But anyway, this, this Proposition 200 did three things. Proof of citizenship to register to vote, two forms of ID at the polls, and then no free stuff for illegal aliens. Um, kind of thought that was what we always thought it should be. So anyway, it passed overwhelmingly when we got it on. Hard fight. Voting for fair at the last minute, coming in with some resources, may have not got it on because we were just running neck and neck with, we knew we'd be challenged, we knew that there's a good chance we wouldn't have enough signatures if challenged. We had enough, but we, we, we didn't know the percentage would be bad. So it was very, very concerning. But they came in at the last minute of resources and we gathered a whole bunch more paid signatures and ended up passing it comfortably. And we were sued. And uh, of course, and expected. Uh, so anyway, but then we're fighting at the Supreme Court, and I feel pretty forced. I've had three, actually four different issues go to the Supreme Court. I feel like I'm getting to know some of those folks personally. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and I can tell you a cute story in a minute about Judge Roberts, which I, I appreciate, uh, even though I don't always appreciate his vote. Uh, but anyway, so then we're fighting this battle, and I thought that was an awful thing. And, and then in 2006, I put four initiatives on the ballot dealing with illegal immigration. Proposition 100, those in our country who commit violent crime are not allowed bond. It was a constitutional amendment. No bond. 
They stay in jail. They're illegally here. They commit a violent crime, and yet we were releasing them, like San Marco County, 92% back on the streets after committing violent crimes. The Ninth Circuit Court did not uphold that. And they quoted, if you will, ignorant and political statements for not doing it. Even though Russell Pearson and Andy Thomas talked about illegal aliens, they really mean brown people. Never in anything we've written did it deal with a specific race of any type. Illegal is not a, crime, not a race, it's a crime. So anyway, and the Supreme Court didn't take it. It takes four votes on the Supreme Court to take an issue on. They only, we only had three. We didn't have that fourth one. I'm sure they would have upheld it. So that was disappointing. But, but anyway, and then we had Proposition 102, and a, a rancher had just lost his ranch down in, uh, on the border for, to illegal aliens because he bad guy. He gave him food and water and held him for ice, you know, or border patrol. Uh, I guess that's a pretty bad thing to do. So they sued him, ACLU and company again, and he, and he couldn't continue to fight him, and he lost his ranch. So I wrote this one, and of course, it didn't affect federal law, but in Arizona, an illegal alien who sues a citizen may not get punitive damages. They can get made whole, and I'm not very happy of that, but they cannot get their new Cadillac because they sue you. So anyway, in that proposition, 103, English is the official language. And almost every community is violating the law. Read it. It says you have to further the English language. You have to, you can't do anything that diminishes from it. That you, you know, goes on and on. I, I wrote it very carefully. I knew we'd be sued on it. We were, we won. Uh, you know, and yet you still have to push one to get English. Only two exceptions in it. That's public safety and health. We made those exceptions because, again, Nobody wants anybody to die, so you know we want to be able to communicate with them. So we made the two reasonable exceptions to it. And then also a part of that four was Proposition 300. Proposition 300. Let me take a little group. By the way, I'm limping around a little bit. Not, not only because I'm old. I just had a knee replacement. So I'm just slower than usual. So anyway. Proposition 300 was very, very clear. Then you had Judge Arthur Anderson. Yet, first of all, back up. The, 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 the Maricopa County Community Colleges sued in order to give them in-state tuition. Proposition 300 said no in-state tuition, no grants, no scholarships, no taxpayer dollars, directly or indirectly, to anyone who is illegally in the country in violation of federal law. President Obama's order did not change the law. It was illegal, unconstitutional, it is still illegal for them under law. So anyway, they thought they found a loophole to go around that. And so Judge Arthur Anderson said, oh yeah, you ignore the law, just, you know, you, you, you can, you can do that. Fortunately, we appealed. And if you might remember the battle, uh, your Attorney General, uh, Mark Brnovich, uh, was not suing them. And so I made a gesture that he either do that or I will sue them. And I'll sue him along with it. And, uh, and, he, and he said to the paper, I will not be pushed around the bowling by Russell Pierce. Why not? Okay. Well, he ended up filing that the day before the deadline was up for him to file. And we won. A unanimous decision at the appellate court, a unanimous decision at the Arizona Supreme Court that said they can't do it. You can't give them the in-state tuition. And ABOR, the Arizona Board of Regents, was also doing it. But they didn't even have the liberal Judge Arthur Anderson's decision to hide behind. That decision applied to Maricopa County Community Colleges only. The Arizona Board of Regents was giving in-state tuition to illegal aliens. I called them. I have a couple of good friends on there, and I said, I'm going to sue you. Mm -hmm. You know, this goes beyond friendship. They cannot violate the law. They cannot abuse your tax dollars. And so I, I made that statement to them. And, 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 Anyway, they continued to do it. Uh, so we were preparing. We didn't need to sue. We'd already had a Supreme Court decision. So anyway, but we were going to sue them for damages, and each one of them individually, yeah, you know, for damages. And so anyway, they retreated from that as they're trying to figure out how they can do it. This, this fight just never ends. So anyway, uh, it was on, and, I'll, and I'll come back to, to the Prop 300. 
what's, what's going on just this last session at your legislature. But anyway, then in 2007, uh, I wrote a bill for employer sanctions. Mandatory e verify the only state in the nation to do this again. I mean, we led the state in the nation almost every aspect. Mandatory e verify for every business in the state of Arizona, they must hire citizens. And if they hire an illegal alien knowingly, and again, I believe knowingly, you, fraudulent documents and stuff, I don't want to get snuck up on, but if they know it, but they know it, and most of them do, then they, have, they will lose their license for 10 days first offense, revocation for a second offense, never do the business in the state of Arizona again. If those laws were enforced, like they did, like they thought they were going to be, after those laws were passed, before even 1070, there was a mass exodus of Arizona, in, of the illegals in Arizona. So then we, then I wrote 1070. Again, had all kinds of fight getting that done. In fact, I wrote it in parts and, and had several bills on it in 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009. Actually got it through in 2009, the, the, the Senate, only for the House to kill it because I had some folks sneak out the back door and not vote on it. They promised me they would. So that was more than disappointing. And I uh, was pretty harsh with them in, in my response. And so then in 2010 it passed, and it passed unanimously because they knew you guys had had all you're going to take. It was the political pressure that caused them to do what's right. It was during the debate of SB 1070 that Rob Krentz was murdered on the border, a rancher down there by an illegal alien. We had seven police officers who pictures and information I showed them that had been murdered by illegal aliens. Mark Spencer came in and with the support of plea and law enforcement in support of the bill, which I appreciate. I had my son come in and testify, who had been critically wounded, almost died in a gunfight with illegal aliens. He's a deputy sheriff. So I, so you know, that wasn't. And let me be very clear: that was not my motivation for doing what I did. I was doing it years before that. But I can tell you just a quick story with that. I was speaking at the Brookings Institute, it's not a conservative organization by any means, and I'm on the panel there, the only conservative, <coughs> or the only guy even close to being called a conservative on that panel, as we're debating the illegal immigration issue. They're a policy setting group, and they have, they're pretty powerful, they think they are anyway, and they push the Washington swamp around a little bit. So anyway, literally, why I stand at the podium, and I've been fighting this battle for years now, Literally, standing at the podium, I get a note, call home, an emergency. And I thought, good grief, she doesn't bother me when I'm out. I, I, I can't imagine what that's about. But I stepped from the podium, went to a phone, and Louie told me, he said, Sean's been shot. Don't know anything else. Be an air-evac air 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 to a local hospital. Just get a flight home, and I'll, I'll catch up and give you the rest as soon as I can. So then I, I take a different flight home, and I'm, I'm just stop over in Chicago where luck would have it. The plane I'm on broke down, so they're moving us to another plane. And I get a call over the loud speaker, you know, Russell Pierce, phone, you know, and on the wall. So anyway, the phone that they have there. So I took it, it was the way, and she said, you're not going to believe this. That Sean was shot by an illegal lady who wanted on homicide charges in a gun battle. You know, you stop thinking. When it becomes personal, you fight this battle, fight this battle. So I, I empathize so greatly with the angel moms and dads who have lost their loved ones to crimes that should have never happened, people that should have never been here. Those are, those are lives that could have been saved just by actions of our elected and appointed officials to do their job. And there's hundreds of them, hundreds of them on a regular basis that are killed in this country. And apparently the left and the Republicans that are part of the Chamber of Corruption, they just think that's collateral damage. You know, if it happens to their child, they wouldn't think that quite so the same way. So anyway, I was sued again. I was sued on employer sanctions, by the way. I won that at the Supreme Court. You know, they said, yes, Arizona, 
can <laughs> okay, take license away from people that violate the law if they're hired illegal aliens. And e verify is, is that's a federal mandate, but we can further it. So I'll move on that battle. And then they sued me on 1070. 1070 is a very simple law in all reality. They make it as complicated as they can, but it was simple. It just said, you will enforce the law, and they cannot restrict you from enforcing the law to any degree greater than federal, federal law allows you to enforce it. In federal law, there's never been a preemption in, on, on the states on enforcing immigration laws. Never been a preemption. If they had wanted the states not to enforce the law, because again, naturalization is a congressional duty. That's the establishment of immigration. It's a congressional duty. Regulatory enforcement has nothing to do with that. They, they decide who can come, but states have always had the ability to enforce that. And so the Supreme Court agreed with me on that, on Section 2B, the, the section they were really after. Because Section 2B in, in 1070, 11, 1051 2B, it says not only you can enforce the law, but it's compelling language. It tells them they will enforce the law if while the course of their duties they come across somebody they believe to be in their country illegally, they will investigate that. And if booked, they will not release anybody from jail without notifying eyes. It's a great law. And it was, started, it was enforced briefly. You know what the result of the enforcement was? And that was just a threat of enforcement because they thought we were serious? Property crimes dropped 47%. Auto theft dropped 46%. Homicides dropped 50%. Phoenix Law Enforcement Association wrote a, 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 a piece on that and put it in a press release in November of 2011. They said because of 1070, and nothing else has made the difference. He said, we're 600 police officers short. We have old policies, old strategies, you know, lower budgets. Nothing has made the difference in this city except for 1070. That has been the greatest crime reduction in the history of the city of Phoenix. You don't see that in print, do you either? No. No. No, you, you, what you hear is, I've messed up the economy. I've driven people out, you know, no more jobs. I had a lawyer tell me that I single-handedly destroyed the economy of Arizona. Uh, I said, if it saves the country, I'm okay with that. Uh, but that's not true. But anyway, if that's what they want to say, I'm okay with it. So anyway, it's been a battle. It's been a long battle. But if we just force our folks to honor the laws in the country, Arizona has the best laws in the nation. Best laws in the nation, just like Second Amendment. Do you know we're the number one state in the nation for Second Amendment freedom? Not number two, not number three, we're number one. Now, I'm proud to have been the author of almost every one of those bills, including the Freedom to Carry Act. In other words, you don't need a permission slip from government to, <laughs> to exercise your Second Amendment liberties. And let me tell you, when you, when you deal with people who say, oh, you're pro-gun, turn it back on them and say, I'm pro-rights. <laughs> has nothing to do with guns, I'm pro-rights. Don't let them corner you with whether the gun's good or bad, because we know they're not. They save lives. Guns save lives. But put back on them about, it's really about rights. It's about your right. It's your liberty. It's the Second Amendment. It's the Constitution. You guys have rights. Okay? And they, the government didn't give them to you. They recognized them. They put them and enshrined them in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. But it was to protect those rights. They were God-given rights. Mm -hmm. They recognized that. Your founders recognized the government did not have rights. And they worried. They understood the nature of man. They understood the propensity of man. That when they, when they gain positions of authority, they tend to exercise unrighteous dominion or with that authority. They knew that. So they put these in a place, hopefully, to stop them. Second Amendment said... Your, your rights to, 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 for, for arms, you know, guns are, is to be uninfringed. Right. I think I understand that. Yeah. You know, apparently our politicians don't. It's just like a recent court decision with the schools. Very aggravating. Mm -hmm. Though they, they made a consent degree. Where your attorney general agreed to a consent degree, and that's what both sides agree, to make... Because Proposition 301 that was passed back in 2000 uh, said you'll fund the schools at inflation or transportation. In tough times, you don't have the money for inflation, you'll at least fund transportation. 
You always hear this, that we gutted the schools, we took men. Never has there been a reduction. Never. When in the recession, 2008, 9, and 10, when things were tough, there was no money, we still funded transportation. We've always funded it according to the law. But you'd have them believe it or not. They always tell you they're a billion dollars short, we cheated, we took their money away. It's not true because, and I'll tell you why, <laughs> they get away with that to a degree. Because the consent degree with the Attorney General in the far left was they decided, because the proposition said that you'll fund inflation or transportation. They agreed, apparently disagreed with Webster, because they said, or means and. Oh. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, my kids like to know that uh, when I give them options. And, and by the way, I, I you know, just a, a side note, uh, you know, I, we laugh, my children, I've got five kids. Actually, I have eight kids now, Let's, uh, I'll tell you why. Uh, I have recently adopted three children, my grandchildren, uh, ages, and they were younger family for three years now, but they're now eight, 11, and 12. So all my children will be empty nesters before I am. <laughs> <laughs> so when you look at it that way, it says, not really fair. <laughs> I'm grateful I can do it though. But but I'm never gonna have those days where Luann and I just say, hey, let's go do something, take off. I don't have that luxury. And, uh, and to trade that, my mom. That to trade that, if you're saving these three children in an environment where they're safe, secure, and I hopefully taught right, uh, is worth it. Uh, my wife still does make her Disneyland trips. So it's not all. Uh, really does, at least once a year. And it's so funny, we're having a conference and uh, Wyatt's birthday, he's 12, he's, he's going to be 13 here pretty soon. And, and she's, is, is a, for her anniversary, and she just finally uh, uh, cashed in on it. I bought her a trip. She loves Disneyland. I, I'm gonna have her investigate. I think she's got something going on with Mickey. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, she loves Disneyland. So anyway, she's. I bought her a, a trip by herself. Just go relax, man. Just go relax. Go to Disneyland two or three days, just by yourself. So anyway, then I she said, I think I'll take Wyatt. I said, if you, and we already just went by the way, the whole family about two months ago. I said, if you take Wyatt, then Ethan's going to want to go on his birthday. Tatum's going to want to go on her birthday. She says, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I don't want to invest in California. Yeah. I do everything I can. I buy my gas at the Flying J just where you cross the border. I try to keep, I try to use nothing while in there so I can make it back to the Flying J in Arizona to buy my gas when I come back. You know, I intend to leave no deposit of anything worthwhile in California, other than Disneyland. So it's got to be moved. So anyway, it's, it's been a long battle, and, and, and here at this last session, your legislature, again, tried to pass a law, passed out of the Senate, sent it to the House, Senate Bill 1217, another end run around Prop 300. And it was a payment to the Arizona Chamber of Commerce who wrote an op yesterday before that bill was dropped, who said they think there's wiggle room in Prop 300. Let's see. Upheld unanimous, unanimously by the Arizona Supreme Court. It says no tuition, in-state tuition, no grants, no scholarships, no taxpayer dollars, directly or indirectly. I don't know what loophole they're looking at. But they think they found it, and they wrote this bill, and they were going to create a brand new category that the DACA students could fall into. But it was thousands less than a citizen out of state would have to pay to come here. Really? I mean, I, don't you get tired of this? Yeah. Our citizens don't get treated as well. They're not legally in our country. We've paid for them $10,000 a person to go to K, each year to K through 12. So they already owe us big time, their parents, whoever's responsible. So now they want to get them free education. Free education, or, or in this case, uh, uh, lower, uh, lower cost. They can't, leave, well, temporarily they can because they issued illegal work permits to some of them under the Obama administration. They're illegal. They don't have a right to work here. It's a felony. So we're going to educate them because that's going to, that has a duration that's still under being fought in court. 
But if the Trump administration wins, and if the courts recognize the law, they w it will win, then it's a felony to hire them, but we're going to spend thousands of dollars educating. This makes no sense at all. No sense at all. And they're taking jobs from Americans. If you really want higher wages, stop the illegal alien invasion. Stop the invaders. If you really want safer neighborhoods, stop the illegal invasion. Stop the invaders. If you really want better neighborhoods, safer neighborhoods, if you want to control the, in, the implosion of our schools, enforce the law. That's all it takes. Again, they fled. According to the Arizona Republic, 150,000 fled the state of Arizona, believing that every police stop was going to be an arrest of them. So they fled, because they really thought we'd do something about it. Well, again, your leaders, your politicians. Now I'm talking about here in this town. I'm talking about other towns. You tell me any city in the, in the, in the state that's literally enforcing the law. Oh, maybe one or two here and there, but there's, they're not enforcing them. They're ignoring them. They don't ask the questions when they're stopped, required by law, to, to, if, they have, if they're suspecting that they're illegal. It's the law. It's the law. But we're not holding them accountable. You ought to pass a petition here in Payson. You ought to pass a petition mandating strict enforcement of SB 1070 and 2479. If they enforce the employer sanctions law, you know, if they can't get a job, they'll think twice about staying here. If they're going to get arrested, and I say it's traffic stop at a time, they're going to leave. If they felt the threat of the laws being enforced, they would flee. But they know your leaders aren't going to do that. They're controlled and pushed around by the Chamber of Corruption, who want cheap labor at any cost, the left who wants cheap votes at any cost, and you, the citizens, are paying the price for it every day. You pray that it's not somebody you know, because there are people dying because of it. You know, it's just like the gal, sadly, in, in uh, San Francisco, and, and Grant Bronebeck, the Mesa QT uh, young man, 19 years old, uh, because he didn't get the cigarettes fast enough, he was murdered by this guy who had just been released from jail, been arrested three times before that for violent crimes, a member of the Mexican Mafia, a known gang member, released from jail to kill, Re if, he had been, if the law had been enforced, Grant would be alive today. I mean, that's a life, that's a kid whose family is affected. I mean, there's not just the person whose life is taken. It changes the world for so many people when that happens. And yet, we don't seem to have the concern we ought to from our elected officials to enforce our laws. Uh, Russell, did SB 1217 get passed or not? No, it didn't. Let me finish that story. Thank you. Anyway, it did pass the Senate, SB 1217. And, uh, and uh, uh, Senator Carter was the author of it. Oh, yeah, and I, I, and I sent a letter to the legislature. I thought it was very polite. I told them that I will sue them. And I will name every single person who votes for that bill. It's in violation of Prop 300. It's in violation of a constitutional provision called Prop 105, which says that once you pass something at the ballot, and all four of these initiatives talk about were passed at the ballot, the legislature cannot change it except to further it. And then it takes three-fourths of the vote to further it. And they were going around it. So I said, you're in violation of Prop uh, 300, you're in violation of Prop 105, uh, I will sue you. I'd already talked to Judicial Watch. I said, I need you again. They said, go after him. And so I did. I got Rusty Bowers in the House to hold the bill. So then they found another bill, it's called a Strike Everything Amendment, it's a different bill, different subject, different everything, but they put 1217 on it. And so then I got a hold of President Fan, because it was a striker in the Senate, uh, a Michelle Udall bill, who's also a very open border. And anyway, I, I talked to President Fan, I'm very candid with her, and I, I like President Fan, but I said, if you let that happen, President, I said, it's going to be a real fight, and, you, and you're going to be in the center of it said, you have the ability to hold an illegal, unconstitutional bill. She held it. So I'm grateful to President Fair for that, so we've killed it. I don't doubt that they'll be back next year. They are determined. The Arizona Chamber of Commerce and, uh, and, Glenn, and Glenn Hammer 
are dedicated to doing everything they can to make sure the laws are not enforced and benefits, special treatment is given to those in the country. We've had this battle for years. So anyway, that's the short uh, of what's happened, uh, you know, in, in the, the battle that's taken on. But I am so grateful for patriots around this country. I'm so grateful as I get invited to speak to groups. Because I'll tell you, most of them have no idea how good our laws are. No other state compares. No other state compares. 34 states, like I said, come to me and say, golly, we love it. Uh, uh, an emissary of 12 House representative senators from Alabama flew, or Tennessee, flew out to Arizona on their own dime, gave me a great big plaque and a big flag of the volunteer state, Tennessee, and thanked me for what I was doing, and we're working on legislation. Alabama sent some folks out to visit with me. Congressman Steve Keen flew out from Iowa and thanked me and said, Russell, this is an earthquake right now in Washington, D.C. They're scared to death of what Arizona is doing. I only wish that they had a right to be afraid. But with our weak need politicians and police chiefs who work for, 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 for weak need mayors, and they are there, the employee, that's why they, they hide and don't do what they're supposed to be doing. Your, your streets are not safe. Your jobs are taken from, from you. The cost is immense. Fair did a study uh, in 2000, I'm sure it's at least that bad or, or worse now, that in Arizona alone, just, just to educate, <coughs> medicate, and incarcerate, $2.6 billion a year. I'm telling you now, schools should not get one more dime until they fix the real problem. That's $1.2 billion spent a year educating those who have no right to be in our country. Yes. Until they fix the problems, quit feeding the animal. Yes. Let them know you're a no, you're going to be a no, and you let them know if they don't do something about it, they will be out of office. Yes. The only thing they respond to is when they leave, is they're going to have to face those folks who put them there. And if they know you're mad, they know you're angry, it will make a difference, hopefully enough. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's why I'm so grateful for this. I know you guys can be doing many other things other than to be here. But you've taken the time to be here. This is about our freedom, our liberties. This is about a country we love. This is about a constitution that is like none other in the world. A bill of rights like none other in the world. But we're not the freest nation in the world anymore. We have so many laws and regulations. I mean, we're buried with them. And every time there's a new law that interferes with your choice, it takes away your freedom. Seatbelt laws. I think everybody ought to wear a seatbelt. But I don't think it's government's business. You know, put them on your grandchildren, put them on your children, wear them yourself, absolutely. But it's a choice. It's not government's role to tell you how to live. You know, like Benjamin Franklin said, if you're more concerned about liberty than you are freedom, you don't deserve either. Right. And folks, that's exactly where we're at today. Tell them to stop. Every year, 12 to 1,300 bills are introduced out of the legislature. Do you really need that many more laws? Yeah. Now, I'll tell you, out of fairness, some are fixing mistakes that occurred or loopholes like the Chamber of Commerce has found. So some are legitimate. They're fixing things that need to be fixed. But a lot of them are just brand new laws. They just passed a law for texting. I think texting ought to be stopped. I agree. But we have. We have, we have laws that already deal with that. We have laws uh, 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 that, uh, I'm trying to think of the term on the one, uh, that deal with, with drivers not doing what they should be doing. That's Lane reckless change, driving. improper driving, huh? Reckless driving. Yeah, well that, and they have another law, distracted driving. You know, uh, they, they have all the laws. So, you know, then you got to go after the gal that I saw this morning putting on makeup while driving. <laughs> the guy that's probably reading the newspaper while driving. I mean, where do you go with this stuff? Pretty soon you can't do anything, the government's going to have a hold on you. Enough's enough. Enough's enough. I agree, we need, we need safer neighborhoods. We need people to be responsible and smart. But to use the force of government, just like socialism, to steal your money, and then to give it to folks who don't work. That's fascism. It's wrong. 
It's absolutely wrong. It's socialism. It's wrong. You can't reward those. And you, did you guys any of you read the bill that AOC, uh, uh, the gift that keeps giving, uh, wrote? In her bill, the Green Deal, it says that she wants to guarantee a wage to everybody. Guarantee a wage. And in the bill, she had the nerve to say those that work and those not willing to work. Wow. Boy. I know people that are excited about that. <laughs> and I guess it is cruel and unusual punishment to some folks, you know, so maybe they have a constitutional issue. But folks, we really do need to stand up and do something. We can change it. We can make a difference. We just have to be loud. In a nice way, but loud. We're not taking it anymore. And that's what I tell you. It's like, uh, uh, I'm old to the eating. Uh, the little firecracker in, in, the, in the convention, uh, not Thomas Paine, it was uh, uh, Give Me Liberty. Uh, Patrick Henry. Patrick Henry, one of my heroes. Uh, in fact, I, I used to have that whole speech memorized. And, and he talked about when do, you, when do you stand up? When you're too late and you're, and you've, you're chained and you, you can't move and, and that's when you fight back? There's no better time than now, he said. You're never going to be stronger. You're never going to be in a better position. And I advocate that's the same thing today. We're losing the battles left and right. If you don't stand up now, it will be too late. You will lose this republic. You will lose the freedoms you enjoy now. Your children will suffer because of the decisions we made not to fight. So I would implore you, be heard. Let them know that freedom is too valuable to let go, and it's not free. Just had Memorial Day. Those that have died shed blood for our liberties. It ought not to be in vain. So anyway, uh, I appreciate you folks. I'm grateful that I was invited up here uh, to speak. God bless you. May God bless this wonderful republic. Okay. I will. I said I'll, well, I say I will. Even tough ones. Okay. We'll give him some tough questions. Okay. Uh, Janet has the mic over there. I'll have the mic over here. And you know we all... No. Janet, Janet, you can get it away from the speaker. Janet, walk up the aisle farther. Move away from the speaker. There you go. Okay, so you can't ask a question. You need to raise your hand and you can't ask a question until you have the mic and keep your questions kind of succinct. Okay, go ahead. We have got Glenn over there. Glenn Ross, and you are a champion. I don't know where you've been. I heard about you, but I didn't hear a lot. Yeah. Well, some of the you heard about me, I, I want to defend. <laughs> I'll surprise you. I was business manager and financial secretary for 14 years for IBW. I filed a nice circuit court case called Ross vs. IBW one. I had a libel and slander case. I supported the right to work bill. And then, believe it or not, they hired a guy to shoot me, but they didn't know I qualified 68 points above expert with this. <laughs> anyway, we got something going on here in town. In every town, you said it. They don't quite want to enforce the law. We, we elect these guys, and we got some among us that don't understand. We had a bill here recently we were working on, or a, a bylaw change that said, I wanted to put in there, if you're not an American citizen, you don't get to vote. You don't get to vote. That's already the law. 480,000 people got taken off the California voter list, or, or uh, jury pool list, because they found out, even though they voted in the election, they were not U.S. citizens. They get their foot in the door. Now, the sheriff was here the other day, and I like the sheriff. I support the heck of it. But we had a young man I hadn't seen for a couple of years. And I seen him, and he said, well, I just got out of jail, and, and, and uh, I need some clothes. I haven't had anything to eat. So I helped him. I made him work for it. And then I said, what was you in jail for? And he said, armed robbery. <laughs> wow. 
He said, I hope to get my green card after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. He said, now he's working over at the Del Taco right now. <laughs> you know, that's just a Payson, Payson passed a law here a while back to stop that. I don't know why it's not being forced where it went. Right now, you have a mayor that I happen to think a lot of, uh, Tom Morrissey. Tom Morrissey yeah, is absolutely. a former chief absolutely. deputy of the uh, of the marshals. One other Good really man. quick thing. A APS came out here and had about 50 guys to clean underneath the power lines, all down through here to Phoenix. I got a boy that I raised. He was born in this country. Has some mental challenges. Talks fluent uh, Spanish. We went out there in a the truck. There was 50 illegals. APS said. Well, we got nothing to do with that they're a subcontractor. That's what they do around here. We could have subcontracted out, and we, our eyes are closed. We don't know what goes on. If you had an attorney willing to take that pro bono, you can sue them. The law covers them as a responsibility. They cannot hide behind a subcontractor. Yeah, right. uh, and, and he's right, basically, in terms of the fact that they're not the hiring person. Uh, they may not directly be affected by their license, but you can't go after it civilly because they're in violation of Arizona law. They, they, if they knowingly have people that work that, that are not in the country legally, you can sue them, you can hold them accountable. Yep. Okay, we have Jerry here. Oh, hi Russell. Hi sir. Uh, you mentioned Judicial Watch a couple times in your speech, and I'm really big on them. If it wasn't for Judicial Watch, we wouldn't know 5% of what's going on in Washington, D.C. You know, we've had Mark Spencer up talk to us a couple of times. Very impressive guy. Mark's a very dear friend. He led the yeah. fight for, for the law enforcement side and supported me on 1070. He was there at every meeting. Yeah. Wonderful man. And I just want to tell everybody, if you have any money, give it to Judicial Watch. Yeah. You know what, uh, and, and that boy, what a great state, because I love Judicial Watch, and I owe them, and the state of Arizona owes them. Owe them. They went to court on Prop 200 for us. They went to court on employer sanctions for us. They went to court on Prop 100 for us. They went to court on 1070. I'll tell you a quick story about 1070. It's kind of fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. We tease about all the time. Uh, everybody, uh, Jan Burr would like to take credit for the bill. Uh, Jan Burr uh, didn't help on the bill and almost didn't sign it. Uh, she signed it the very last day she had to sign it. After, and, and she wouldn't have won governorship had she not signed it. Uh, she was 23 points behind uh, uh, Dean Martin. Son of State, I love Dean Martin. They, Thought it was the real Dean Martin, they didn't realize he had died. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then Buzz, uh, uh, Buzz who ran against him too, the, the young guy. So anyway, uh, and after she signed that bill, in 10 days, she moved up 24 points. Wow. You know, 24 points in 10 days. It was, a, it was popular, and they, they always talk about the controversial 10 Every time they write an article, it's controversial 10 controversial bill. 73% of Arizona supported it, 73 of America supported it, according to the, uh, the uh, um, uh, Rasmussen poll. 73%. It's just like the four initiatives I talked about that I talked about. Do you know what those pass by on an average? 75%, a majority of every single demographic, including Hispanics. The lies that are told to let you think that they're against this those American Hispanics are as American as us. And they're offended that they keep being clothed as if they're less of an American than we are. It's not right. But anyway, you're right. And uh, love Judicial Watch. Question on this side over here? Oh, my gosh. Oh. Okay. okay, Janet has a question. Okay, and then... And then uh, Mr. Pierce, are, this, uh, are you just going around, not just, but are you going around speaking? Are you actively involved in introducing any other legislation? I guess you're not active in, I, actually, I don't know if you saw it, Arizona Republic just had a mention of you recently as, as uh, some of the, the horrible, radical uh, conservatives that have been um, eradicated yes. from our government. That's right. Extremists, me, Andy Biggs. Uh, yeah. 
Kelly Ward, they put all three of her pictures in there as right-wing extremists. And, and to find that, that means anybody who stands up for the Constitution and the rule of law. We know where they stand for. So, yeah, I am working with the legislature. And I'll tell you, uh, out of fairness, so you know, Bob Thorpe, and I appreciate Brenda, you're one close to Brenda when she's there. Bob Thorpe has been an absolute champion of everything we're trying to do. He's been a warrior on this stuff. Again, limited because of the lack of support from the appropriations chair in the House and others. So we're, we're working on that and we're, you know, again, they only have 31 House members, yeah. the Republicans. You know what it takes to pass a bill or a budget? 31. That means everybody's in charge. You can't lose one. And when you have money, it's harder to pass the budget because everybody wants something. When you have no money, it's easy to say no. We, we, we have no money, but if you have money, they all want something. Carter and Brophy McGee were holding out one another $500 million spent in the budget before they'd get on. Really? Cheaper to buy a Democrat vote. Good <laughs> <laughs> <I agree. laughs> Um, a minute ago you were going to say something about our county government and you were on the track of saying something about Tom Morrissey, so I just ask you to finish that. Yeah, here's real I want to say, you ought to, you ought to get a meeting with Tom Morrissey. Uh, you know, I mean, he would, if he knew he had your support, I think you'd see him step up. He loves 1070. We've had lots of conversations in the past. Uh, you passed a law, and I don't know what happened to it, because you did pass a law about hiring illegal aliens. You, you prohibited it from hiring somebody out of the country illegally. Uh, apparently it's not being enforced. Like you said, Taco Bell's got it, this, uh, everybody else has got uh, You know, just enforce the law. I mean, you can pass city ordinances and strengthen it. It's the same you have to pass a law to enforce the law, but that seems what we had to do with federal law. We had to pass 1070 to enforce federal law, which is already the law, AUSC 1373, AS and A.U.S.C. 1644 already says you cannot restrict law enforcement from enforcing federal law. But we have them, sanctuary policies all over. 1070 said no sanctuary policies in the state. No catch and release. It's still going on. Get with him. Put out an executive order from your mayor to enforce the law. And if they stop somebody in the country illegally, call ICE, book him into jail under the Bail Bond Act, you can hold them for 10 days, if, they're in the, if you suspect they're illegal, you can hold them up to 10 days, give ICE plenty of time to come up and get them and take them away. So there's no excuse. There is no excuse. The laws are there. I've got a whole list of laws that are against them. Do you know if somebody's harboring an illegal alien as a felony? If they're promoting the staying here, offering a job, or referring for a job as a felony? If they transport them, it's a felony and you can take their car? Sees it? Why isn't that going on? Create fear and the laws will start to be enforced. You're not taking it anymore. There's Jerry here. I see you, Joe. Uh, thank you very much. After Russell, we're yes. delighted to have you. I have one simple question for you. Yes, sir. I almost apologize for asking it because it's almost like those of our generation and there's a lot of us in this room ask you to do more than you already have. Well, my question to you is. This is wonderful information that you are sharing with us this evening. Most of us are being uh, gratefully educated about things that we can't keep track of. As you well know, we can't remember everything as well as we used to. My question I don't is, remember all my children. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. I have 21 grandchildren. Oh, awesome. But, uh, one of the things that bothers me more than anything else is the loss of the education experience and knowledge that is embodied in wonderful people like you. And my question is, of all of this information that you're sharing with us, are you writing it down? Are you publishing it? Are you distributing it? Because we don't want to lose it. And you know, I'm, we I'm, want to lose you. I've got lots of writings. I've not put it into a formal book or anything. As you can see, I, folks, just, just to come up here, I just wrote down a few things. I keep track of as much as I can. I, I've been encouraged to write a book from the beginning to the end on all these battles and stuff. Uh, you know, cause I've been in the battles as, since a young man. I, I, I've been, again, I used to work with Cleon Scousen back when I was very young. And my brother, who, who probably financed most of Cleon's stuff, 
so I had the chance to spend a lot of time in the Cleon. I love this country. I understand the principles of a republic. I understand and know carefully the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the battles and the fights that went on with it. And I'm grateful for that knowledge. And it does motivate me. I'm, I am so impressed with our founders and what they stood for, knowing that if they lost their work, every one of them would have been not just, not just killed, they would have been tortured. Back then, the, the, the death penalty came with a lot of torture. Everyone of them knew that would be the case. They knew they'd be, they'd, they'd be killed. They'd be taken from their families. They knew they'd lose everything they had. And actually, they did lose everything they had. Almost every one of them you know, died in poverty. And there's a list of how all of them died. They gave their all, including their lives, for what we have. They ought not to go unreturned. It takes, it takes a tremendous amount of courage, and I'll express some of my courage. I will state plainly that I don't think there's anybody in this room that would fail to endorse me to encourage you to do as much of that as you possibly can. And it's kind of rude to ask a guy to do more work than he's already done when he's I'm, been such a dedicated public I'm, service, for which we are all eternally grateful. Uh, thank you very, very you're much. You're overly kind. Let me go. I mean, uh, I did make a promise to my wife that I've been, uh, you know, I'm raising three kids changes things a little bit. She wants me home to help her. And so I did make a deal that I will not speak more than once a week. I'm grateful that I get a lot of invites and, and, and I take and I do t nurse them out once a week, but I, I can't not do it. I mean, I'm with you. I, I've been in the battle for so long. I just, I just want to motivate people. I, can. I, want to, I want to let people know the laws they have, that their hands are not tied. You know, I mean, you really can make a difference. And sometimes we think it's not worth it or it doesn't matter. And I understand that <laughs> because it sometimes seems like it doesn't. It seems like they don't care what you think. They didn't respond to Grant Ronaback being killed, murdered by a mafia gang member released from jail after being arrested for another violent crime. They don't seem to care about the folks that, that have given their lives already. And there's been tons of them. I, I, I have a long, long list of those that have died at the hands of illegal aliens. And, and, I, and I don't have very many written down compared to what's happened, so you're right. Uh, I am disappointed, but I, I will not retreat, and I will do everything I can, uh, and I'll speak when I can. I will be cautious with my wife and her wishes. She wants me doing it, but she just doesn't want me doing it full time. I have a job, I go to work at six, I get home about six, uh, and she says, in the evenings, I just like a little bit of a break, come home, you know, help with the kids. I understand that. And I love those kids. So I'm, I'm glad to do that, but sometimes I, I feel like I need to be doing more. Uh, but it is for them. It's like Abigail Adams wrote just right to, to John. I mean, we know why we do it. We do it because if we don't, they're not going to have the freedom we've been given. And people have paid the price to give us our freedom. And I don't want to fail them. Right, we have Jeff, then Marlene, then Joe, then Phyllis, and then after that we'll see you. Well, good evening, Senator uh, Pierce. I just wanted to let you know that you're legendary among the talk show hosts. <laughs> They're gruel from coast to coast. I've traveled from coast to coast listening to many different stories starting about 1996 with all the different people that have mentioned your name, and it's indeed a rare pleasure to be here and to hear you speak. Thank you very much for your service. Your caution. Sure. Thank you, sir. Sure. I would like to ask you, though, with the repeal of the uh, Proposition 187 in California in 1994, and looking at the future of 1070 from 2007 onward, could you tell us what a individual citizen can do in order to go ahead and affect some change? Because oftentimes. People are too old or too weary or perhaps not encouraged enough to be able to go ahead and go forth as you have. But I know that there are people that are here that are willing to go ahead and address this as an individual citizen. So if you could give us a little guidance on that, I would appreciate it. I, I can give as much bad advice as anybody else. <laughs> I can tell you there are things that we can do. And for, start with your representatives. Start with your city council. Think, everything happens at a local level. Crime happens at a local level. 
your neighborhoods, you know, get with your neighbors, everything else. That's why if you're not a precinct committeeman or active in your Republican Party, get there. You know, because here's what happens there. You get to elect your leaders, your district chairman, your, your state committeeman, who then go and, and elect your county chairman and your and and, and the state committeeman. They then vote on your on your state chairman, and they they make a difference, whether they're a chamber person or whether they're enforce the law person and stuff. And they do make a difference, uh, and and so you can't get involved. You get to know who your three legislators are, but get involved in your districts. Go to those meetings. Listen to them. Look at their voting record. You can call. You can pull up every one of those folks and look at their voting record. You're right. You can't spend all your time down there. You you have jobs and families, and I, and we all know that. And you can't just spend your life down there. Uh, but you can make a difference with your senator, your two representatives, and you're fortunate. You've got a pretty good group. Uh, you know. And but you know, not everybody's that lucky. But but they still need encouragement. Because they all, and, Jim, and I talked to somebody the other day, and I'm going to be very candid with it. A very good person, I, uh, I still hold in, in fairly high esteem. But I was so disappointed in the comment I got. We were talking about, you know, what has to be done. And I gave them a list of things they can do still. You know, it's time to go back to Supreme Court. I ought to read you some of what Judge Scalia said in the Battle of 1070 when three sections were not upheld, 11 of the 14 sections were upheld, contrary to public opinion. But he wrote some scathing comments about the other other Supreme Court justices, you know, because it, it, those other three provisions just failed by one vote. It was five to four. But but what was interesting, he said, do they not understand that Arizona doesn't have to sit by for a government that has a non-enforcement mentality? Do this, they, and, and they're going to have to get used to the inconvenient fact that we have 50 sovereign states who have a right and a constitutional ability to protect their states from invasion, from illegal activity, that they should be able to go farther than 1070 goes. And he went on and on. He said, had our founding fathers listed, listened to the Supreme Court, the other five members, they said they would have gone but ran from the convention hall. Wow, powerful statement. He really, really got after him, and a lot more. So we've got friends up there, and the little things that can be changed we, we need to push it back up. You know, that's what the left does. They don't stop. Well, we ought not to stop either. We've got a different Supreme Court. The outcome may be different. So these tough laws that they didn't support, Proposition 100, let's get it back on the ballot in, in, in language, get it up, where illegal aliens committing violent crimes can't be released. They must be held to the trial, and when released, released to their country and not on our soil. You know, those those what ought to be done. And we can make a difference by starting at the grassroots level. Start with Mayor Tom Morrissey. Plead with him to see what to, to create to get laws passed. I don't know the rest of your council very well, so maybe he doesn't have the votes he needs to do that. But I'm telling you, go after him. You have the ability to mirror and, and put into place laws telling your police chief he will enforce the law, traffic stop and drive. You're not about roundups, just the fact that it's traffic stop out of time. And when they run across them in the country illegally, arrest them, hold them for eyes, report them to eyes, do their job. Phoenix's new policy is a direct violation of 1070. They violate 11, 10, 55 in six different areas. And I brought it to Mark Bernovich, your attorney general, who said, oh, I don't think so. And he gave City of Phoenix a green light we know we have a bill that was passed that says if they break the law as local community, county or city, that they can lose revenue sharing. Well, that's that's critical, and that's the backbone of most of their revenue. So all he had to do is side with us. I showed him six places where they violated the law, and I won't go through it. It's fairly lengthy, the you know, that. But but I put it all out there. I wrote it up for him. I handed it to him, and he still gave him a green light. Had he not done that, because Judicial Watch is willing to come in and sue them. We'd been working on a lawsuit, and we were working on it to go with using Senate Bill 14, I think it was 1487, which takes that revenue away if they're found, you know, response. It takes the AG, but if they're found in violation of state law, they can lose their revenue sharing. But he, he submarined that issue by doing what he did. Made it almost impossible to sue with the Attorney General, which states in law has to be the guy to say they're not following the law. 
And so because of that, judicial watch have a hard time coming in and spending hundreds of thousands of dollars defending a law with the, when they're going to have to fight the Attorney General who says he doesn't think it violates the law, uh, even though I can show them a six place. So, so you've got to put pressure on these people. I'm so upset with Martin Bernovich, you know, I'll tell you me, I, yeah, I have a buggy whip I'd use. We have Marlene here. Oh, wait. Yeah, Marlene, and then we'll go over to that side. Thank you for being here, sir. Uh, just a couple little things don't amount to much. You said that you feel bad because you can't do as much. Are you on Facebook? Yes, I am. Well, I, there I you don't go. Use, I don't use it very much. Well, I ought to use it more. Uh, send it to all of us. <laughs> we'll send it to thousands more. Well, yeah, so yeah. it works. Russell Pierce, yeah, on Facebook. I, I tease because if there's something about family and friends on there, my wife posted it. Well, you if can there's something political, day. I post it. So, but, you know, the thing about it is, is uh, if you just did Facebook, people have an attention span of about 10 seconds. But if you have just a five-minute presentation once a week, you, know, you can do that at home. You know, know? What a great idea. I, I just talked to somebody who says, suggested the same thing, to do a, a, a video, once a week video. And if you get following, I mean, I mean, sometimes that stuff it'll resonate, maybe not with everybody, but with some. I mean, mm -hmm. I, well, it'll go to the right political groups. Yeah, you know, agree and you can do groups, yeah. You yes. can do groups. I'm just not good on technology. I mean, I can spell IT, uh, but it's about as far as it goes. Well, the other thing is I wanted to uh, tell you, too, is in Payson, we had a bad newspaper, and now we have worse newspapers. So <laughs> that doesn't help us too much. They're not always against us, but enough. And the question I wanted to ask you about, which courts are you going into to sue, to, to do these suits that you do? Well, usually, you know, us suing, usually in defense, we're, we're defending, and they're in federal court. They know their success in federal court is much more likely. And so they sue us in federal court, almost without exception, and they find liberal judges, like the Ninth Circuit Court. That's what I'm wow. worried about. You know, about. Trump can appoint, before he's done, he's not appointed them all, nine new justices to the, to the Ninth Circuit. If he appoints nine conservatives, they will still be a minority on that court. So to win is tough. It's not going to happen overnight. But it's starting. And I want to say, I've got, I, you know, I talk to people all the time about, well, if Trump would just not say so much. You know what? That's the style is. He's a fighter. He's a warrior. Right, I'm yeah. glad I had him. No other person running for president could have withstood what he no. stood from the left-wing media and the lies by the pundits. I, I'm proud of that man. I was a, I was a Tom Cruise guy. But I am sure a, a Donald Trump guy now. And I, I, I'm ready. I mean, again, I tease. I, I tease my children. And, and I tell them, you know, there's going to be a revolution. You know, they do this war thing backwards. They need to hire us old guys. We're not going to run. We can't. We stay and fight. You know, I'm ready for that revolution if it will save my country and my children. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Phyllis, do you have the mic? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's I hope I'm working this right. Okay. Uh, I just have a question. Years ago, when John McCain was still alive, he and Ted Kennedy tried to pass an amnesty bill and the American people rose up. They shut down the phone lines in Washington. They, they shut down everything with their response and it was no. So what has happened now? Why didn't the American people come to, to aid this time? The, the problem with our folks are, you know, they're raising families. They're working jobs. And so we get out, if you will, yelled by the left because of that. And, and the left, ACLU, the SBLC, the Southern Poverty Law Center, the most radical, even worse than the ACLU, that hate moms, hate pro-lifers, hate military, hate people that are Second Amendment. They call them the extremists and violent and a threat to America. Uh, these groups are radical, but they're really well-funded. And so it is hard, but you're right, we did shut down Washington. Yes. They, they shut off the phones because yes. they couldn't handle what was happening. Exactly. And that, we've got to rise up to that level again. 
uh, John McCain was wrong on many issues, you know, and his, his love with, with Ted Kennedy did great damage, you know, to, to many of the laws in this country. I'm not a, I don't, I don't want to badmouth those that have passed on, but he didn't do Arizona any good, you know, and, uh, and neither did Flake. And I'm disappointed. It was amnesty after amnesty attempt. It was uh, continued to play this game. Uh, if you read the bill, the the uh, 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 the one that McCain and, and Flake, the Gang of Eight, put out, and Flake and McCain were part of that, uh, the, the the Strive Act. And the Strive Act, you've read, it gave amnesty to everybody. You know, it even gave amnesty to gang members. It gave amnesty to those that were, were in line for deportation, already had a court ruling. It re re removed the court ruling and relieved it. People have no idea. Do you know Heritage Foundation? I, I know you guys, this late, I'm sorry. But the Heritage Foundation, one of the greatest organizations in America for research, conservative, good people, they did a study here a few years ago that said that if they understood the law on this, on this migration and this this family orientation that happens and the and the lottery that happens with them if they understood all those laws every person that became legal could bring an additional 260 people with them when they count all their relatives so take 30 million times 260 yeah. i'm not going to do that math real fast on my head my day it's a bunch it's more than we have in this country you know, and it's just outrageous with the impact that could happen as we continue down this road and destroying our culture, destroying our country. 63% of them are on welfare that come across there. The majority of them, almost all of them, free medical because of Mtala. And Mtala doesn't require them to take every walks into an emergency room. It requires them not to let them die. But because of lawyers and litigation, they take anybody who walks into an emergency room, they treat them as if they're going to die because they don't want to be sued. The law doesn't require that. It only requires we're humane. We don't let people die. So we treat them. And that's all I'm told it does. But if you talk to the pundits and the education folk, everybody they'll let you think they can. Plyer v. Doe. You know? It, they say, well, you can't ask questions about illegal aliens in school. Not true. Plyer v. Doe, which is the decision, a 5 4 decision again. That where they went around the constitutional law that said you will educate anybody in this country whether they're legally or illegally you know first of all it's not law it was a court decision secondly the education folks would have you believe you can't ask them any questions not true nowhere in there does it say that nowhere in there does it say that it, we just have to know the law and start fighting back you know we're lied to every day by the media it's just, you know, and, and education is the best tool we can have. And then, of course, make the phone call. Meet with your legislator. Meet with your city council. Meet with your mayor. To let him know you guys will be on. Sign a petition get two or three thousand signatures. Take it to Tom Morrissey. Let him know the city behind him. Enough is enough. Tucson, or Tucson, Payson could go on the map as one of the leading cities. This town is small enough and great enough. You would get great recognition when you stood up and, and enough is enough, letter of the law. We're taking no more. Okay, we have two last questions. Last two questions are Joe and Brenda, and then we're running out A number of years ago, I heard Jorge Ramos uh, say <laughs> that the United States was at fault uh, because they were encouraging illegal immigration. And first I was angry. Uh, then I thought about it. He's absolutely right. When you encourage bad behavior, you get more of it. Yeah. You, you know, you're right. Again, the, cha the chamber wants cheap labor at any cost. Uh, you are, are your employers. Uh, I can't find good help. I hear this all the time. Russell, I can't find good help. Uh, the, 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 the American kids won't work. They won't do the work these guys do. You know, if we, re if we return to the work ethic and said, yes, they will. If mom and dad would get, get out of the house, take away their, their, their iPad and not let them watch TV all day long, they, you know, they, we have the largest number of non-workers from the age of 16 to 24 ever in this, with, with the full employment that we have going on. I mean, we have the best employment in the last, in, in over 50 years of every minority ever group. So there's no excuse for it, but you're right. Those, that's what they continue to do. And they, and they want cheap labor. The farmers fought me. They worked against my recall because I, was, I told them no more. You know, and uh, the, the housing development came against me. Uh, and, and my family's in construction because I said no more. You know, and uh, I mean, Jan Brewer got reelected because of it, and I got kind of tossed because of it, and that's okay. I'd do it again. 
You know, I would do it again. You know, you just can't let them chase you off. You know, and it is tough. And I, I agree with you. We are encouraging it because of, again, stupid politicians and stupid laws in some cases. Okay, Brenda. Thank you, my friend, you. Senator Pierce. Uh, I appreciate you so much and all the work that you have done. And uh, I worked on a lot of those petitions getting signatures, and we got that stuff to the ballot. And, um, you know, there's uh, some familiar words that most of you will, re will recognize, and that is, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And we're in this room, and we need to make sure that we don't become part of those who perish, and our children and grandchildren. Um, this is an issue that, if you are observant, is designed to destroy the country. Okay? It's designed to destroy the country. Um, that's not some weird conspiracy because it's in action and you can see it happening each and every day and uh, through the news media and the chambers and, and that sort of thing. But I want to thank you for sharing all the different um, bills and the legislations and the propositions. And uh, I think that, um, as you said, Payson is a place that we can come together and we can get the council to move on these issues and actually enforce these laws. We have the council members that are also Tea Party members, and uh, although they're probably at a work session this evening, um, uh, I, I believe that we can, you know, they're so new that they don't know that, there, that these laws exist, and that's the whole thing about, you know, if you don't know these things, you can't do anything about them. So we need to search those laws and find out the areas that we can enforce within um, our community and actually within our county with our sheriff. Um, we need to have a heart-to-heart -heart discussion. You know, if you want to remain in office, you will enforce these, uh, right. you will enforce these laws. This is your job. Your this is your your sheriff, your constitutional, you constitutional law enforcement guy answers right. to you, not a city council. And you need to hold him accountable. Absolutely right. And uh, so um, I hope that I can get some of you to work with me to endeavor to make some of these meetings and um, you'll say, well, we don't like confrontation, but if you don't have confrontation, then you're not going to get results. You have to say no to some things and yes to other things, and you have to stand your ground, and you have to do it. And um, so I, I appreciate you being here, and I appreciate so much the work that you have done. Thank you, sir. Brenda, thank you. You need to start at, 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 at a lot of places, but do you know you just elected a communist to the U.S. Senate? Kirsten Cinnamon. Kirsten she registered as a communist the first time she registered. That didn't work for her. Then she registered, registered Green Party. That didn't work for her. And then she registered uh, Democrat. She told me personally her ideals are with the Communist Party. You know, you elected a communist. You know, and that's how close we're getting that, that socialism, which is just the cousin to communism. But they're, they're, they're running on that. The left is running on tax increases, on, 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 on the giveaways, on socialism, on health care, on everything. No, you can't afford what they want to do to you. Yeah, that's right. Boy, I mean, it's, it, it's right. And somebody else said earlier, I mean, if we don't fight, we're not going to have this republic much longer. Okay. Exactly. Will you be willing to hang out just a few more minutes after our meeting because we're going to close and then... Uh, yeah, let me, uh, something I forgot to do, okay. if some of you could sign, I, real quick, and I know you're here, so I really apologize that I forgot. We, there's an initiative going around, we talk about initiatives, it's called the American Dream Act AZ. I'm, the, I'm a tax collector, unfortunately, but again, one of the apostles of the Savior was a tax collector, so I, I know they can be saved. <laughs> so anyway, but I'm not happy about property tax. I, I, it's an attack on freedom, ownership. Our country found, found on life, liberty, and property. Life, liberty, so forget about the money. Let's talk about freedom. At some point in your life, should you not be able to own your home? At some point in your life, do you, do you not have to pay government a ransom to stand? I sign, if, uh, I sign foreclosures almost every single day. Not because they didn't pay their bills, normal bills, because they didn't pay government. And they lose their home. Had a gal come in the other day, Born and raised her home. Her dad built the home. She was losing it. Well, we were able to save her. You can't do that with very many people. 
and we collected money in the, in the office and paid her first year. She was three years behind and got her on a path to pay off the others and make it almost nothing. I, it breaks my heart, you know, when people are losing their homes because of government. They're made homeless because of government. They're put out on the street because of government. There's an initiative, the American Dream Act AZ, and I've got petitions here, you know, it's going to take 300 and 50,000 signatures to get it on the ballot because it's, it's a constitutional change. But it says, when you reach the age of 65, I'd love to do it for everybody, but let's start something. At 65, you pay no more property tax. And everybody says, what about the money? The money won't change. Yeah, there'll be a little bit of a shift, but it won't change. The levy stays the same. Nobody will get less money. That's something needs to be done about that too. But the levy won't change. But the freedom, when you're 65 pay taxes all your life, wouldn't it be nice to own your home? At least at some point. I say 65 is kind of the magic number because that's the, that's the number in the Arizona Constitution that is a carved out group. So it's, the, it's just the number we chose to use. Where do we sign? So we have got all kinds of things. And not just sign, take one. Take one and get just your family. If you, know, if you can't fill it all up, send it to me partial. But take them, get them filled out. It's good. It's a huge hurdle, but I, if you love freedom, yeah. you ought to be jumping. We'll have the gal seat. that's running it up here too. Can any Arizona yeah. citizen sign it, regardless? Yes. Of no partisan issue. Democrat, independent, Green Party, communist, Republican, uh, uh, can all sign uh, if they're registered. It, does if they're it have registered to be by county, county or? Huh? Does it have yeah, to be yeah, by the county? petitions have to be by county. Oh, so, that, so, that so on this one, we're at, we're right in Navajo County. Anybody that signs up here? Actually, this we're in is Hila not Navajo. County. I mean, you're right, Hila County. Uh, uh, I keep saying Navajo. You don't yeah. have one from Maricopa with you, do you? Uh, well, yeah, a couple, I've got blank ones, so we'll make it anything you want to make. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, so yeah, but they have to be by county, you know. So yeah. And, yeah. Okay, I don't know why I said Navajo. So if but you anyway. want to sign, why don't you just, after we close, you can kind of come around here and Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a petition. Just take them, sign them. Let, yeah. I've got a yellow sheet here. Just put your name, phone number, and how many you take. That's all you need to real quick. Take one or two. You don't have to sign them here because we kind of out of time. Come up and take one. I've got a stack of them that big out in the truck we run out. I, I guarantee you I have petitions for you. When are they due? Uh, they're, they're due next May. 2020. But here's what happens. Everybody means well. They take it, they put it on the refrigerator, yeah. they put it on the desk, it sits there for eight months. Yeah. And so that's why I want the phone number. Somebody has to say, hey, where are you at on that petition? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot all about it. Let me get busy on it. So, yes. Why don't we just retain some copies for the next meeting? I, I can do that. And not have the rush. Yeah. yeah, I can do that. Okay, so let me finish up here and then we can finish up.